Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're making Hasselback potatoes, which are effectively the fancier version of a baked potato. I'm very familiar with baked potatoes. I have never had Hasselback potatoes before, but I've seen like the little gift recipes of them online fairly frequently. They will usually put cheese and then like bake it and then like put like bacon and stuff around it. And it looks like one of those things that is either gonna be delicious or like sickening. But what we're doing today is gonna be a little bit more simple heavily leaning into the side dish aspect of like what this could bring to a Thanksgiving table. Today I think is gonna be a pretty quick video because there's not a whole lot to these, but it's still gonna be tasty. I'm pretty optimistic. I, like I said, I haven't had them before, but I can only imagine them just being a crispier version of a baked potato and I'm all about that. So without further delay, let's run through the ingredients, which there's like three of, and get into cooking. Butter potatoes, seasonings, and sour cream. The first step is to kind of cut the potato into that signature Hasselbeck style where you're gonna do a whole bunch of slices about eighth of an inch thick, but you don't wanna go all the way through. And so usually you'd use like chopsticks that you'd line, like that's what I've kind of seen on the internet. However, when I was at the store, I thought of like, let me grab some chopsticks from the section that they have the sushi in put them in my basket. When I got out to my car, I left them. I left it in my basket because for whatever reason, I did not put it in the bags that I have and it was just forgotten. However, I do have a fair number of wooden spoons. So hopefully those aren't too thick so that my cuts um, don't kind of like leave too much meaty potato together to, so that it gets crispy all the way down. But that's what I got to work with. That's what I'm gonna make work. So if you don't have wooden spoons and whatnot to use, uh, or spatulas, that's what they're actually, uh, chopsticks are the move, and that'll probably give you a thinner, but I guess it's more likely that you're gonna cut all the way through if you use chopsticks. So give and take situation. Next is to put the potatoes into cast iron pans. And I say pans because six will not fit in my biggest pan, so I'm gonna have to use two. However, in hindsight, I probably didn't need to make six because I'm just making this for myself, but we all make mistakes. Just some mistakes are gonna be more delicious than others. Anywho, I'm going to sprinkle the seasoning I have on top of those, one, I am gonna put Old Bay on just to see how that tastes. So obviously this is kind of like my own seasoning. I'm not really doing what the recipe calls for. I just was kind of like, these are seasonings that I like on baked potatoes. So I'm gonna put those on here. You can put whatever seasoning you want. You can probably buy some kind of like spice blend or make your own, just kind of what flavors do you wanna to combine together. I don't really know if there's a combo that would be like the most Thanksgiving, maybe like Italian seasoning, kind of give you like a stuffing vibe, but I don't know. You let me know if you find some spice blend that you can put on a Hasselback potato that when you eat it, you're like, this feels like Thanksgiving. I couldn't really think of that, so I just went baked potato because I'm eating this not on Thanksgiving, so I didn't really have to do that, but obviously I'm doing these as like potential Thanksgiving sides, so that would, in my opinion, require some tweaking to make it more Thanksgiving-y, even though this was on a list of Thanksgiving sides. But all that rambling aside, put in pan, season, that's it. now that it's all seasoned up. And I will say, because I kind of forgot about this a little bit, that there is a second seasoning step later. So don't use all your seasoning in that last step. I kind of did, so I might have over seasoned. We'll see. The next step is to cover in foil and then throw that in the oven at 425 for 30 minutes. Thank you. 
Now that it's baked for the 30 minutes, remove the foil, drizzle on the other half of butter, which I don't, I realize, I don't think I actually said to, to put the butter on top in that one step. So either I'm going to re-record it or I'm lazy. So you'll find out in the final cut, was I lazy or was I a responsible conveyor of information? Regardless, you would have seen me do it. I just might not have said it. Uh, but in this step, we're drizzling on butter, which is gonna be different because that one we kind of painted on butter. And in this one, we're drizzling, but then we're also applying more seasoning. So get that done have a good time with all of the butter that's going into this. I'm excited. So here's the, the final product. You can see all like the nice slices kind of expanded and became crispy. I have from the, the other one that you can kind of see there, I took a little bit of the Old Bay one and then just my kind of like baked potato seasoning as I'm calling it. And we're gonna see how they taste with and without sour cream. It is steamy though. So I probably should have waited a little bit longer for them to cool off but here goes nothing putting my mouth on the line. So here we have an interesting situation because one of the tricky things with baking a potato is they're uh, hard to cook all the way through uh, effectively. And I thought that the slicing of the potatoes was going to make that vastly simpler. However, they're still not like I was expecting crispy or like tender, but it's still, it's not raw, but it's like not as cooked through as I was expecting from 50 minutes in the oven. So that's a little disappointing. However, these spices and whatnot are very good. So uh, the solution here would probably be bake it for longer, or it will work well with what I've kind of planned on using like the leftovers for, which would just be like, I think they're called like American potatoes, where you cut them into the slices, like they're pretty much already pre-cut, and then just kind of like fry those on a pan and then have that for like breakfast with like eggs and whatnot. So not a total loss, but definitely would be disappointing if I made this on Thanksgiving and they came out like this. So, and I'm, 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 I followed the instructions. So it's one of those situations where you could fix this by like continuing to cook it more. But for rating, I feel like they should have, and I think it was 15 to 20 minutes was the range that they had for like that second bake. And I did the full 20. I think I might've done a little past 20 so that this like, maybe my oven doesn't actually get to the right temperature or did I do the wrong temperature? I wrote down 425 and I cooked it at 425. So that's what I was thinking, like I was like maybe, maybe it said 450, but my paper does not. So I'll have to look online to see if I messed that up. So a little disappointing. And, mm, I mean, this is gonna be pretty rough for it, but it's probably a two out of five, just because it's like a, not a raw potato, but it's not, it's not what I want. And I'm probably gonna, I think I'm gonna have to make a new graphic for that, because I don't think I have a two out of five right now. And so this is, this is an interesting situation, because sometimes things go wrong. I should have thought of this well, no, it's, the, it's back to that slicing. The, the, them being sliced up, I thought was gonna make it cook a lot better. And I thought it was gonna come out being like 
potato chip crispy, but it wasn't. So I wonder, I wonder what happened there. The world may never know, but I'm sorry. To, I mean, they look great. So if you just show people pictures, which probably got you in here, hate to, hate to do this to you, but it looks much better than it is. Like, it's not bad. I feel like the two might be a little harsh, but sometimes you gotta make examples of things. And this one was not cooked all the way, and therefore it gets the two. However, tomorrow morning for breakfast, it's probably gonna be delicious. So, learn from my situation and, I don't know, I guess bake it more. <laughs> It probably is gonna be, maybe broiling it might help. I don't know. I don't know the solution to this one because it's honestly kind of caught me off guard. Was not expecting that. But that's some of the fun of this channel is things happen that you don't expect. Usually up until this point, I feel like most of it's been pretty predictable. So it's kind of nice that something came out of left field here even though I used my right hand and came from the right side. Hopefully it's stage left. But on that note, bye mom, still not dead. See you.